added a new button called the camera control. It can do a variety of different things. You can directly jump into the camera mode by pressing it once. If you press it once again, you'll take a picture. And if you hold onto the button, then you'll start recording. And the recording will stop once you stop pressing the button. If you press it lightly once, you'll be able to control the zoom in and zoom out by toggling the button left to right or up and down depending on the orientation of your phone. If you press it lightly twice, it'll take you to other functions such as the exposure, depth, or camera filters. You can also set your camera button to do something else. All you need is to go into your settings, press camera, then camera control, and you can choose from these options. You can even set it up to do nothing at all. And in this case, I'm going to try the code scanner. Now back to your camera, just like the previous iPhones, you can directly choose a camera filter within your camera, but now you can actually go a step further and adjust the tone, brightness, and color for your filters. For example, I choose this quiet filter, you can actually change the brightness, color, and tone by using the panel options down below. There's also some changes to video recording. Once you recorded a video, you can go back into your photo album press edit, choose audio mix, and you can adjust your audio. And according to Apple, this function can isolate voices and background elements to make it sound like it was recorded in a professional studio. And for those who takes lots of pictures but don't want the hassle of editing it one by one, you can now batch edit. All you have to do is go into one of your photos, edit it the way you would like, press copy edits, go back into your photo album, select all the photos you want to have the same edits, Press paste edits and your phone will help you apply your edits to all of the selected photos for a more streamlined process. The new iPhone 16 Pro got rid of the silent mode switch to what they call now an action button. Just like the camera control button, you can also set it to do different things or nothing at all. In my case, I'm very used to having the silent switch so I'm going to set it up to control my silent settings. If you press it once, you can check what mode you are in. If you do a long press, then you can change it to the ring mode or the silent mode. This next feature is something I thought to be extremely interesting. Have you ever scrolled through a website and it was annoyed by how many ads or distracting items there are on your screen? You can now hide it with this new feature. 
All you need to do is press this icon on the top left, press hide distracting items, and choose the items you want to hide. Now you can get a clean interface without distracting pop-ups on your screen. Moving on to some new functions of the phone, the flashlight has been upgraded where you can not only adjust the brightness, but also the beam from a more focused beam to a more widespread light. Moving on, there are also more widgets that can be added to your control center. If you press this plus sign, it will lead to you an array of widgets to choose from. I still have to go through these widgets to see what is useful, but it does look quite overwhelming to be honest. Last but not least, you can directly change the style of your app icons now on your phone. All you have to do is to select customize and you have all these options to change your icons from light to dark to automatic. The tinted options lets you customize your own color. My favorite color is pink, so let's do a pink color. If you don't see a color you like, you can also directly sample a color from your wallpaper to make everything match more perfectly. Just like this. You can also change your icon from small to large and the large icons actually look pretty cute.